Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature as this upcoming working week is going to be cold as we do see a proper arctic blast moving in over the next 24 hours or so. We've got low pressure pulling away into the North Sea and a very cold northerly wind coming in with temperatures around 5 to 10 degrees below average for the time of year. There will be snow for some areas through North England, Northern Ireland and Scotland again mainly over higher routes but could come to low lying areas within some in some intense showers and uh, there could be some wintriness elsewhere as well. And of course, there'll be widespread frost and ice, especially through Monday night and perhaps Tuesday night too. So a very chilly week coming in, perhaps towards the end of the week, into the start of the weekend, as we'll see in some of the longer range charts, it could turn a bit warmer, temperatures recovering towards average, maybe even slightly above average come next weekend. But we still have a lot of uncertainty whether it will be a settled warm up or remain unsettled with showers and perhaps even thunderstorms if we do start to waft up some warm, humid air up from the south. So definitely looks like end of April, the last couple of days into the start of May will be a bit warmer, will be average to above average. We can't say for certain whether it will be anything drier as we head into that bank holiday weekend uh, next weekend. So do remember if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The link's in description. So do start on the live radar. You can see it's quite an unsettled picture at the moment. Lots of little areas of quite moderate to heavy rain appearing. And we've got this big area across the southeast into East Anglia skirting the east coast. And this is a developing area of low pressure. That is moving into the North Sea and on its back edge starting to drag in that northerly flow again. The north wind is starting to arrive in Scotland and we'll have a look at that in a minute. But you can see some really intense rain across parts of northern France. Luckily we're only on the periphery of that, some moderate uh, rain down into Essex and Kent, but most areas more towards the light side. Into the south of Wales and southwest England, more areas of showers with instability. That's moving into the Midlands and up towards northeast England again, some moderate to heavier pulses appearing within this rain. A few showers across North Ireland and Republic of Ireland, but again, nothing too crazy. And again, across Scotland, we're starting to see showers move in and they are starting to turn wintry over the highest routes as we see that cold air moving in, dropping the freezing level, which could drop down to only 100 or 200 metres over the next couple of days, really quite low for the end of April. Again, a very cold air mass starting to move in, properly arriving through this evening and for all areas into tomorrow. So if you put on the temperatures as of around 1pm, again, you can see where we've got the rain, it is colder. Uh, again, that's to do with uh, sun strength not giving any warmth to the surface. But across East Anglia, perhaps uh, into parts of the Midlands, maybe central southern England, seeing some warmer spells here. Again, probably really only topping around average for the time of year, 14, 15 degrees. And across parts perhaps northern England as well. And a few areas in Scotland, Northern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, getting those yellows in. Again, temperatures around the mid-teens. But wherever we see blues, the southeast, the southwest, through Wales, northern England, up towards Scotland as well. It is cold out there. Temperatures struggling around that 10 or 11 degree mark uh, under the rain and cloud. And through tomorrow, that's going to be the top temperature uh, again most areas will probably be seven eight nine or nine degrees tomorrow as that cold air really moves in uh, and yeah gonna make it really really cold over the next couple of days and especially when you factor in the northerly winds you get factor in cloud and rain and showers within that northerly flow it is going to feel really bitterly cold in places that feel like temperature in some areas could drop down to the low single digits in the daytime so yeah really really cold for the time of year if you do put on the UKV now and have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days, again, you can see the rain spreading to the southeast at the moment. Should be clearing through this afternoon, but just areas of more rain through the rest of today, just spiralling and giving quite horrible conditions at times. Eventually, you can see the cold air really digging in in Scotland. Most showers starting to turn to snow inland, and through all areas into tomorrow, it will be cold again. Perhaps a bit of wintriness through northern Wales, maybe in the northeast of England over higher routes and maybe into low-lying areas for a time um, right overnight we could see a bit of falling wintriness there maybe grout or hail sleet within these showers and through Monday it's going to be really cold 
even into central southern England, where we're not getting the coldest air, but still five plus degrees below average for the time of year. But it's under that cloud and rain, it's going to be miserable out there. Perhaps even colder than areas further northwards, where the upper air temperatures are colder, but have a bit more sunshine. So we will have to see what happens, but it is going to be chilly tomorrow, and snow showers could be quite likely in the north. Beyond that, into Monday evening, you can see clear skies do develop for quite a few areas. And wherever they do develop, there will be a quite a high chance of those temperatures dropping down towards freezing, if not below freezing, with a frost developing. Now, the good thing for Tuesday is that we're starting to see the low pressure system move away. We see a brief um, spread out in the in the isobars, which means there'll be less showers around. So Tuesday will still be a pretty chilly day. Maybe a few snow showers across Scotland, but most areas will be drier. So it will be cold, but it will be quite a bit more pleasant and less miserable. I feel like temperature will probably be up towards maybe 10 or 11 degrees out there, with the actual temperature being around sort of maybe 10 to 12 as well. So much pleasant, much more pleasant day, but still below average, still really quite cold out there uh, for the time of year. As we head beyond that, into Wednesday, we start to see a weather front arrive. And even though it is dragging out milder air, because it's going to bring a lot of cloud and rain, it will trap that cold air at the surface, perhaps for a day or so. So even with the upper air temperatures climbing, with the weather fronts moving in, it will still be perhaps even colder towards the surface than Tuesday uh, or Wednesday there. Beyond that, eventually the rain and the cloud does move through, and we will see milder conditions through Thursday into Friday. Again, temperatures could recover to the mid-teens, perhaps of the south, but it will still be quite a cold feel out there, quite miserable, with a lot of cloud and rain. Really not too nice. And again, there could be a bit of leading edge snow through Scotland. So if we do have a look at the air masses, you'll be able to see how it all transitions through the coming days. Uh, again, you can see at the moment we've got cold air in, but nothing especially cold. Really cold air just flirting to our north. And you can see it moves in. The minus 5 to minus 10 isofer moves in through most areas overnight, really hitting southern areas through tomorrow afternoon. And you can see it gets to a few degrees below average in the far south. So only you know around 5 degrees degrees below average for the time of year so only yes a few degrees below freezing much colder in the north but as I said it could feel cold in the south under the rain and cloud into Tuesday the cold air mass does remain and perhaps even gets even colder for southern areas through Tuesday but because we've got more sunshine around less rain and, and cloud it will probably feel a little bit milder than Monday and just the power of the sun this time of year can really uh, offset some of these really cold air masses at times into Wednesday, as I said, the milder air does move in, but it will still be a really chilly day in places where they do hang on to the colder air. But even into the south and southwest, it will probably still be chilly at the surface because of the thicker cloud and rain. Into Thursday, probably a better day, really sweeping that cold air away. So Thursday could be a much better day, but still cloud and rain around the temperatures, perhaps though back into the low to maybe mid-teens and that'll be the same into Friday too where those temperatures will recover even higher again the upper air temperatures are getting above average now um, uh, much much warmer but again with the cloud and rain around it will make it still feel not too great the hope is into the weekend we hold on to these uh, upper air temperatures and higher pressure does build in more pushing away all that cloud and rain and it could turn a bit warmer, maybe even high teens or even 20 degrees as possible if we did get a bit of sunshine with this sort of air mass. But again, we still need to see that come into the five day time frame before we're able to really say if that will happen or not. If you do now have a look at the two meter temperatures over the next uh, five days, again, you can see earlier this morning, still really cold across Scotland, that air mass really properly moving in and into this afternoon, wherever you have those areas of cloud and rain struggling around that seven or eight degree mark, best areas maybe 13, 14, where we have less rain and maybe a few patches of sunshine. As we head beyond that, tonight temperatures will drop below freezing across Scotland and perhaps northern England too, so quite cold out there. But as we head into Monday afternoon, look at that, really chilly out there. The far south could drag a 10 or 12 degrees out there, but that will be very much dependent on the positioning of that cloud and rain. If we do see the cloud and rain move in, I'd say most areas will be struggling to get much above 8 or 9 or even 5 or 6 there through parts of South Wales. So a really cold day. And again, these are the 2 meter temperatures, not the feel-like temperatures. What it actually feel like out there? Probably feeling around 5 or 6 for most regions.
Overnight into Tuesday, those temperatures will drop away very quickly and quite a widespread frost for anywhere sort of M4 line northwards. So from sort of Bristol to London northwards, most areas dropping towards freezing or well below freezing around 5 or 6 a.m. The good thing is because the sunset is only around sort of 6, 7 a.m., it will thaw very quickly by most by the time most people are up. Uh, but again, it could get down to minus 3 or minus 4. You can see by around 7 a.m., most areas now around 1 or 2 degrees or higher. So it should thaw very quickly. So it shouldn't be too too many problems but if you're in rural areas maybe shaded regions there could still be some ice into around mid-morning into tuesday afternoon as I said it will be much brighter out there you can see the temperatures are much more even not as regional especially through england wales and the republic of ireland but still cold around 9 to 11 degrees and into wednesday again a frost for northern areas but because of cloud rain in the south it'll hold those temperatures up but into the afternoon Look, those temperatures really don't climb at all, even colder than Tuesday. For some region, even colder, colder than Monday, even though the upper air temperatures are a bit higher. You can see across the far southwest of England, the far south of Republic of Ireland, a bit of sunshine perhaps coming through, and probably in that milder air, could see 15 or 16 degrees. But through many areas of England, Wales, Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland, and Scotland, temperatures not getting much above 5 to 8 degrees, really really cold sort of February temperatures out there um, and again it will feel even chillier than that so Wednesday could be the worst day of the week in terms of temperatures out there even though that's when the upper air temperatures are actually climbing now into Thursday hopefully those temperatures do recover Overnight again could be a frost in the far north, especially through Scotland where we do have that chillier air mass in. And you can see through Thursday afternoon, definitely from sort of northern England southwards, perhaps sort of Yorkshire area southwards, perhaps getting up towards 14, 15 degrees. But still, we've got that dividing line between the cold air and the milder air. It will still be really chilly to the north of that, maybe only again 5 to 8 degrees. And finally, into the early hours of Friday, could be a frost in the far north of Scotland, but most areas now into the milder air. So it should be a good few degrees above average, at le a good few degrees above freezing at least, some areas even staying around 10 or 11 degrees. So if you do now have a look at the long range, see what is in store for beyond that into the bank holiday weekends. Again, you can see the low pressure system moving away to our east at the moment, opening the flood doors to northerly winds. Really, really cold prevailing uh, in. And then again, high pressure starts to build in for Thursday into Friday, but little low gets trapped underneath it. That's bringing that rain through uh, next week. As I said, hopefully into the weekend we do see high pressure building in within a warmer air mass. Again, it's not a strong area of high pressure, so there could be cloud and could be a bit of rain trapped underneath it. For many areas, it should be generally dry, and hopefully some sunshine should come through. So it could mean bank holiday weekend is decent into the Monday. Again, still under a, uh, a, a moderate area of high pressure. Again, nothing crazy. Very temporary, we'll get shoved away very quickly, but it's there through Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and as I said, hopefully give something a little bit brighter. But again, things could change. As we head into Tuesday, perhaps a low pressure system skirting through Scotland and still seeing high pressure to build in, trying to build in, and it does try to properly build in there through the end of that week. But we see something sim uh, very, very interesting there. That is a sort of thunderstorm pattern. We see low pressure sinking to our south, towards northern France, uh, northern Spain, France, Bay of Biscay, and warm air coming around the southeast of this into early May. And this sort of pattern could give big thunderstorms. Low pressure engaging with pretty warm, humid air on the southern, uh, on the northern edge of this low pressure system could be some big thunderstorms, especially for northern France, but could import to the UK. Again, we'll have to see really the small details for that. Uh, again, if we actually have a look at the Cape for that, you can see increased Cape through parts of Europe into the Mediterranean initially, but that could drag toward the UK at times. Again, we'll have to see that. Where well, you can see there actually through Monday the 8th of May, big, big Cape through northern France and uh, the UK there. If we do zoom in, again, you can see increased Cape developments there. That could be very interesting. Could be big thunderstorms developing, as I said, with that on the northern edge of that low pressure system. But equally, look at the temperatures around 6 p.m., 20 or 21 degrees. It would be very warm. It would be quite humid and could be quite a thundery pattern developing around that day 10 to day 14 range. And I must say, we are seeing something a little bit similar from the GEM and the ECMWF here around that day 10 period. So it could be a warmer but thundery pattern setting up as we head into early May.
Now, if you look at the EGM, see how that does compare. Again, low pressure moving away at the moment. Very cold northerly wind moving in. High pressure building in perhaps towards the bank holiday weekend. Definitely into parts of Saturday, perhaps. But actually something developing here at day six, uh, sorry, day seven, is that thundery pattern, perhaps, with low pressure to our southwest dragging up a bit of a southeasterly. Again, the air mass isn't quite as warm. It does perhaps get quite uh, uh, warmer there right towards the end of the run but again could be some thunderstorms within that but you'd think you need some of this warmer humid air to the southeast getting in um with that before we say definitely chance of any thunderstorms there but towards day 10 we do see high pressure building in and perhaps something a little bit dry more settled there but equally it builds further northwards and we could see a bit of a northerly flow there so interesting towards the bank holiday weekend, we are still under higher pressure, but low pressure could, could skirt by to our south, giving perhaps some heavier rain in the south, and maybe if it's in the right orientation, could give some big thunderstorms too. Uh, similar to the GFS run, but the GFS does it about five to seven days later. So similar idea, but not on the same time scale at all, really. Uh, at day 10, um, there, high pressure builds back in. If we do look at the ECMWF now, again, low pressure moving into our east, northerly flow pushing in. High pressure tries to build in for the bank holiday weekend and it's actually successfully does it. Quite a strong air of high pressure compared to the other runs here. And at day 10, or day sort of 7, 8, 9, we do see a bit of a low developing across Europe. Again, so we'd see some warmer air within it. Could be some thundery activity, but not quite as active as the GM or the GFS does, and eventually a big, strong, high-pressure system builds in, and it'll actually be fairly nice, fairly dry, and fairly pleasant, to be honest with this. Again, the upper air temperatures are nothing too exceptional, but if we put on the 2 meter temperatures, you can see into the afternoon, widely, 15 to 20 degrees, and locally could be a few degrees higher than that, maybe even getting into the mid-20s, 23, 24, 25, in a few spots in the Midlands, and maybe central, southern, and eastern England there, so definitely signs, perhaps, that into the weekend, uh, next weekend, bank holiday weekend, things could be more settled, and could be warmer, again, very small little low-pressure systems developing, very subtle differences in the pressure, can give more cloud, can give more rain, and of course, slightly alterations in the wind direction can stop any warmer air masses getting in but from the latest three runs they're all showing high pressure generally in control gm definitely showing a bit more of a low pressure system moving in but generally high pressure more in control and a general warmer pattern spreading in so even if we did see a bit of rain and cloud it would be a little bit warmer or considerably warmer maybe even 20 degrees as we can see here very very interesting seeing that uh, and we'll have to just keep an update on this could be seven or eight degrees for the start of the week or even by wednesday it could be seven or eight degrees and by saturday it could be 20 degrees in some regions so we could maybe 10 plus degree temperature swing in the space of maybe 48 to 72 hours if we do finish by just looking at the ensembles they haven't really changed all too much in the last few days very consistent signal from them cold over the next five days well below average good five to ten degrees below average in most regions and then average to above average as we end April and start May. Again, you could see late next week, perhaps next Friday, Saturday, we could see some heavier rain there developing in the south, that low pressure system sliding through. But once again, we'll have to see what the short range models have for that it's occurring around the 28th into the 29th, so around next Friday, Saturday time. But again, we'll have to see that in detail. In the longer range, still precipitation there, but nothing too crazy. So perhaps a drying signal. But again, we'll have to confirm that nearer the time. And you can see the sea level pressure is generally on the higher end in the longer range, uh, into the higher pressure range. But once again, you know, it is only maybe a few millibars above sort of mean sea level pressure. So the average pressure, uh, what we'd say above that is high pressure, below that is low pressure. So it would be a weak high pressure signal, but still a high pressure signal nonetheless. And if we just look at the two meters temperatures, you can see definitely see a warming trend in the longer term. Things will fluctuate, of course, it won't play out exactly like this, but definitely warmer as we head towards the end of this upcoming working week, as we head into early May. Again, it's inevitable as we head later in the year, but it's good to see this actually come to fruition now as we keep getting delayed any sustained warmer or generally milder conditions with these colder spells that repeatedly happened over the last few weeks and the last two months in general. And all I can say is that sudden stratospheric warming combined with the actual end of the polar vortex, which is occurring at the moment and, and has been occurring over the last couple of weeks as the polar vortex does disintegrate, um, 
all of that downplaying and downwelling through the atmosphere, allowing these blocking patterns to develop and keep giving us reincurrences of cooler or colder weather. And if we are finally we just look at the ECM WF, again, a very similar trend, very cold over the next five days, then average to above average for the foreseeable future. No huge precipitation signal, but no uh, no real major drying trend either, sort of very uncertain exactly how it does play out. But one thing the majority of ensemble members do have is that the air mass will be average to above average. So it does mean if we do see rain, at least it won't be as cold as it has been recently. And if we do see sunshine, it will mean that sunshine will come uh, and, and perhaps give temperatures in excess of the mid high teens, even 20 degrees perhaps, as we head into early May. So anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you wrap up warm over the next few days and keep an eye on that forecast. It is going to be very cold out there at times. You don't want to get caught out in this miserable cold weather uh, underclothed and without an umbrella and hat and gloves, things like that. So make sure you do be prepared. But hopefully, as we head towards the weekend, you'll be able to get the shorts uh, and t-shirt out, perhaps for the bank holiday weekend. But we'll have to confirm that in this next upcoming week. As I said, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.